Okay, gang, the next thing I want to show you is how to uh, just quickly, in the most simple way, integrate a quick checkout utilizing PayPal. This will be the entry level part of how PayPal works and how anyone can just create a simple web page, show an image of a product, and with a little knowledge of forms, be able to pass uh, values to PayPal and allow them to purchase for you. So, what I'm going to ask you to do is go to the PayPal simple. Uh, button demo, click on that bad boy, and then simply download cart.html. Now, this is going to be a lot easier than what you may think, but I'm going to open this up <clears throat> and we'll give you a little uh, little uh, entry. So, uh, first thing I do, and I do this with any type of code that I disperse with, is I show you the usability, how, it, how it's used. And I will say this that the images here are all on my server mm214.com but feel free to grab them if you want and you can just go right click and save image as or create your own images not a big deal so um, let's go back and first thing I'm going to do is just take a look at my source code so this first part is the add to cart functionality now notice how in the form action I'm going to sandbox.paypal.com this is how we'll be developing our own shopping carts this semester. You're going to put your form action toward sandbox.paypal.com. Now, um, the next thing, we have something called hidden fields. Now, the user doesn't see these, but the recipient of the form data will. So in this first one, we see input type hidden, name is add, and the value is one or true. Then we see a hidden command CMD and the value being underscore cart, which is something that is dictated from PayPal. Now this other one, and this is the free version of the PayPal form, it has a name of business. And with this, we add the uh, email address, which I signed up for PayPal Sandbox. Then we have an item name of the product that we're selling. We have the amount and the value. And whether there's shipping or not, this is a value of two, so there is no shipping in this case. We'll be going through these form variables throughout the course, but I want to give you a simple introduction of how easy it is to do e-commerce. Doing it well is another story, of course. So I have currency code, which is US dollars, and BN, which is the button. So this is going to be PayPal shopping cart button. And then I have a submit where my source is actually the add to cart. So let's take a look. I should be sending item name, uh, 13, uh, my, Mr. Microphone, $13.99 to... Um, PayPal. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add to Cart, and I go to my sandbox, and there it is right there. So I can go right ahead and do a guest checkout, which is what we want. So where we want to be at the end of week one is for you guys to be really comfortable with this forms, these forms, and PayPal itself. So that'll be part of our assignment, which I'll cover in a second. But right now, let's just look at the PayPal examples. So I can go ahead and click PayPal Checkout, in which case I would be asked to sign up. Or I can just do Checkout like this, and a traditional credit card form on their server would be functional. Okay? Easy as pie. Um, and if I were to log in under my that email address, I would see the fake money in my fake card. So I'm going to cut this short after I get through the code and um, I'm going to go to the PayPal sandbox and show you how to sign up and get that thing moving. Um, but right now this is all about using a simple form. Now one thing I should show you is that if I do this, if I go down and inspect the element here and I just change this to, I don't know, $1.99 and I go to add to cart now and you go back to PayPal and you should see now $1.99. So there are security problems with what I'm showing you. So what we would normally do is have an intermediary, and that intermediary would call where your card items were and make sure that the values being sent equal the total of the prices of what the card items are from the database. And that's the why we you know need a professional grade shopping cart like open cart. But for now, to get get used to this, know that you need to have sandbox.paypal, you need to have account. And you need to understand the form variables and how forms add to that. Because right now I have just add to cart and I've added the cart, but I also have the option to pay. So back to this, I can always click view cart and guess what view cart does? It puts me to the actual database. So technically this is the database for my shopping cart. And up here at the query string, you can see uh, things about me there. Okay. 
So let's look at the source code for the add to cart functionality, which is right here. It's nothing more than showing the business and adding a token to who I am. So basically it's going to find out who I am and look at that cart and see what's in there. Here you see a new variable, display equals one, which means display true. That's fine and dandy. It's pretty simple. And lastly, I'll show you the, for, the by now. Also notice the HTTPS in this. That means it's a secure socket layer or SSL certificate, and we're sending it to a secure server. So in this case, this is the buy now button. I'll show you its functionality. And we have the same values, but right now, if I click buy now, uh, here we go, pay with debit card. And all we're doing is overriding, and we're going to do our $11.99 plus the $13.99. So we're just going right in to buy. Oh, this is just the buy now one button, so we're not even showing our past purchases. And this is always a good thing to have. Um, if you've already watched our view of what makes a good e-commerce site, buy now buttons are huge. Getting people in and out with one-click checkouts is just an exceptional, uh, exceptionally important thing that you need to be able to do in this field. So let's take a look at the, the um, source code on this section now. This is buy now. And you'll see the CMD is no longer cart. It's underscore ext enter, external enter. That means we're just going right in there. There's no redirect command, but something I want to show you, which is really nice that PayPal offers us, is what happens if they cancel? Well, if they cancel, I can actually send them to a page that makes sense to me, like something cheaper.html. I just wrote that. I don't really have a, a, a file called something cheaper, but maybe they bounced from the cart because maybe it was too expensive. So maybe I send them to Mr. Microphone Mini that's only $6.99. Also, if they, where do they get returned after they make a purchase? And in this case, I'm sending them to my main shopping cart. Of course, you would put your appropriate title here. And now I see, you see item number here. That's for inventory purposes. And then I have notify URL, which means after they buy it, um, I might send them to something like uh, an accessory page, something like that. But this is going to be a very important part of what we do in this, this course is understanding instant payment notifications. What happens on the home page? of your website when you get a response from um, PayPal and it's something someone's made a purchase. Well, a couple things should happen. You should fill an order. You should deduct from inventory. You should notify everyone involved that a sale was made. So those are the important parts of an e-commerce site that I think a lot of new people to the industry don't really understand, but they will be wrapped in this course. So in this video, I've shown you um, how PayPal can use form data and form variables to control their own cart that sits on their server and how you can allow you can make a purchase really easily and I didn't put any product images or anything in here but I'm assuming that when you see this you can make something beautiful out of it. Alright, any questions uh, use my email. Thank you.